Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing my first major perfume haul of 2022, and I should have another blind buy perfume haul video, hopefully sometime next week, if all of my packages arrive on time. I'm still going strong with my low buy for the year. When it comes to fragrances, I'm still missing quite a bit from my collection. So today I'm focusing on Chanel. And I have eight Chanel fragrances in my current collection. So with the additional six that I'm sharing with you today, my Chanel fragrance collection is now complete. So there are obviously way more Chanel fragrances than this, but these are all of the perfumes that I love. I want to wear them, and it was really just a matter of time before I added them to my collection anyway. I decided to go ahead and purchase them all at once, and that way I can share this impressive haul with you. So this first fragrance is really replacing one of the perfumes that I recently decluttered. This is the Coco Eau de Parfum, the classic. I purchased the 1.7 fluid ounce bottle. It retails for 116. This is a warm floral perfume. Keynotes include clove, leather, peach, sandalwood, and tonka bean. It's so bold and spicy, inspired by Gabrielle Chanel's love of all things Baroque. It's a very decadent fragrance. It's certainly not for everyone. I know I've told the story a million times, but I had a bottle of Coco a long time ago. It's been years now, and I accidentally dropped it on the floor. It shattered everywhere. We vacuumed up all of the pieces, and for a few years, then every time we ran the vacuum, it would smell a little bit like Coco, stale Coco. It was awful. But I was just so sad and heartbroken that I could not bring myself to purchase a new bottle. I, I was going through a bad luck spell, honestly, because around that same time period, I dropped several bottles of perfume. So I think I had really bad juju or something. <laughs> I don't think that's the case anymore. I'm going to be incredibly careful with this. I will make sure nothing tragic happens to it. It's always a terrible accident whenever you drop something like this. Oh, it's so good. It definitely smells, I don't want to say dated or more mature, but this is going to be for a grown woman, somebody who really knows who she is. It has such a strong personality, not for the faint of heart, but it is a bold perfume. And it's a little bit sweet, ambery, a little bit powdery. And it's just a little bit serious. Not the fragrance, the fragrance itself is a little bit sensual, kind of provocative, but I feel like if you wear Coco, you, you will be taken seriously. Every time I smell this, I just think of ladies who lunch, a very sophisticated woman, head to toe, maybe a pantsuit or a Chanel tweed suit, pearls around the neck, heads of state I could see wearing Coco. But it does remind me of just a rich Upper East Side woman in New York City who meets for lunch to talk about the ballet <laughs> or maybe some sort of gala or charity event. Upper crust, that's what comes to mind whenever I smell this. Just uber, uber wealthy, extremely luxurious and so classy. Even though I wouldn't describe this as modern or youthful, it almost has a vintage, glamorous appeal. It's as if it went out and then it came back again. I still feel like Coco is so relevant. It's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but if you appreciate classics and you are a Chanel fragrance lover, chances are high you are going to love Coco. And the Eau de Parfum, it just, it's a little bit more rich and smooth than the Eau de Toilette. The Eau de Toilette, I ended up decluttering because I never really grabbed for it. But this, this is a powerhouse fragrance. This could be a date night perfume, Valentine's Day fragrance. It's a little bit warm and spicy, so I do think I will probably get more use out of it during fall winter. We may get another cool front here in Miami, but probably not. So am I going to wear it a lot right now? Probably not, but I just feel whole again. I feel like my heart is complete knowing that I have Coco Eau de Parfum back in my collection. Now this is another blast from the past. This is the original Chance Eau de Parfum. I have not smelled this fragrance in such a long time. Even when I was shopping at the boutique, I did not smell it. I wanted to wait. Of course, I've smelled this fragrance before. This was actually my very first Chanel fragrance purchase, probably 
my very first Chanel purchase, I would imagine, I was in high school. I think I must have been 16 years old, and one of my best friends and I, we used to teach cheerleading lessons after school. It was at my old kindergarten and daycare, and we would get paid in cash once a month. And I remember I saved up all of my cash, and I went to the mall, and I purchased this Chanel Chance fragrance. I think I had smelled it in a magazine, probably a Teen Magazine, Seventeen Magazine. I have an older sister, so we used to get all of those fashion magazines. And I remember smelling it in the magazine and I thought, wow, that smells so amazing. I really want that perfume, but I knew that my mom would never purchase a Chanel fragrance for me, not at 16 years old. I approached the counter confident because I knew exactly what I wanted and I had saved enough cash. I even had a little extra. So when the sales associate offered a lip gloss as well, I purchased that and I don't think I wore that lip gloss more than five times. It was this really pretty light pink kind of shimmery lip gloss, but I it was so special to me. It was such a big purchase at the time that I just saved it. I kind of kept it in my purse, kept it with me, but I never wore it and I think eventually it just got so old I had to throw it away, which was really sad. But I definitely wore the fragrance. I used the entire bottle, every last drop, nothing went to waste. But since then, I've never replaced it. Later on in fragrance training, I remember learning that this cap was meant to be in the shape of a dice because Gabrielle Chanel believed in constantly rolling the dice and not leaving anything up to chance. So even the cap is symbolic. I might be most excited about adding this fragrance to my collection because it has been such a long time. Oh, it's really pretty. I think I had actually forgotten what chance even smelled like. Ooh, mmm, it's zesty. It's a lot more citrus forward than I remember. Oh, but it's so pretty. Now this fragrance is kind of youthful, flirty, just vibrant. This is going to be so pretty for spring, summer. It really has been such a long time since I've smelled this. It's not really reminding me of high school or bringing me back to any other memory except for when I purchased it. This perfume was all the rage and I remember feeling so mature and feeling like such an adult woman because I had purchased this fragrance myself. Chance is another warm floral. Keynotes include jasmine, pink pepper, vanilla, and white musk. This is still signature scent worthy to this day. I know it's not a really old fragrance, but it's been around for a long time, but I'm impressed. I feel like if I had no idea what chance was, if I had never smelled this before and I smelled this fragrance, I would fall in love. It's beautiful. Next, I have another perfume from the Chance family. This is Chance Eau Tendre, the Eau de Parfum. And I was so torn between getting the Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum, but I decided to go ahead and get the Eau de Parfum because I like something that lasts a little bit longer, that's a bit stronger, a little bit more rich. Even the Eau Tendre is a soft, light fragrance. The notes are a little bit softer and more playful, so I don't think this is going to be too much, but I think I'll probably appreciate the Eau de Parfum a little bit more than the Eau de Toilette. Both are beautiful. I don't think you can really go wrong, but this is going to be so perfect for spring, summer. I just can't wait to pull out all of my warm weather fragrances again. Chance Eau Tendre is an unexpected fruity floral perfume with keynotes of grapefruit, quince, rose accord, and white musk. Of course, you know, I love the pink juice. It's very feminine and very different, I would say, from the green Eau Fresh or the kind of peachy orange Eau Vive, which I also really love. I love all of them actually, but Otandra is a clear favorite. Mm. It's so pretty. It's a little bit sweet, but it's not too sweet. And you can tell it's a fruity floral, but it's really not too fruity or too floral. It's just perfectly balanced. I love this perfume. It still smells incredibly clean, like a really incredible shampoo, like a fresh out of the shower. You could wear this every single day. Another great signature scent. Chance Eau Tendre is a crowd pleaser. I used to always recommend either Coco Mademoiselle 
or Chanso Tantra because just about everyone under the sun who smells those fragrances really likes them. I don't think I've ever met somebody who didn't like Otandra. Could be wrong. Anytime I say that, people let me know down in the comment section that they hate the fragrance, but it's just really good. You might not love it. It might not be your favorite. In fact, it's not my favorite, even Chanel perfume, but it's, it's pretty. It's just a pretty perfume. And I also think it's one of those always appropriate, never offensive. It's not so cloyingly sweet. It's also not going to give you a headache. It's not really in your face. It's not too bold and spicy, like maybe a cocoa. So I think it, there are just so many reasons to love this perfume. Now this, I would say, is very modern. It's very youthful and vibrant, so I think this would be a great first Chanel fragrance, a great gift for somebody who is younger. I, I could see somebody in high school wearing this, teens, 20s, 30s, and then anybody else, of course. And now that I'm smelling it on the blotter card, I am very happy I went with the Eau de Parfum versus the Eau de Toilette. It's bright, it's happy, but it's a light perfume. So this, I think, will last a little bit longer and I'll probably still smell it on me a little bit longer than the Eau de Toilette. You really get your money's worth. I never used to feel that way. I don't know if it's maybe Miami culture or fragrance culture, but now I just want my fragrances to be really bold and beast mode. <laughs> this is not a beast mode type of fragrance. I wouldn't wear it for that type of occasion. It's kind of the perfect daily romantic perfume. I could see this for a day date, girls brunch, girls day out, shopping trip, kind of running around, running errands. I have another light and freshy here. Now this is the Eau de Toilette because they don't currently have an Eau de Parfum. I do think that's maybe an area of opportunity for Chanel. I'm not sure if we will see an Eau de Parfum version of their Les Eaux collection, but this is Paris Riviera. I thought I was set with Paris Venice. That was kind of my one favorite from the Les Eaux collection. When they initially launched, they had the Biarritz and the Deauville, both very beautiful kind of oceanic, very aquatic. Deauville's a little bit green, but very just light and fresh perfumes. And I thought, okay, Paris Venice is my favorite. I feel no need to purchase the others. And then they came out with Edinburgh and Riviera. And when I smelled Riviera, I thought, ooh, now this is different. This I like, and it's very citrusy, very unexpected for me. It's unlike most of the fragrances that I'm typically drawn toward, towards but this just speaks to me. It's a bit spicy, again, kind of fresh, clean, right out of the shower type of perfume, but I love it. It's sweet and tangy with a burst of zesty Sicilian orange, patagrain, soft notes of jasmine and neroli, sandalwood and musk. Inspired by the French Riviera, not only are all of the Les Eaux fragrances eau de toilette concentration, but they also have a very fine mister, which I love. Hmm delicious. And I know I'm not a huge fan of citrus or neroli, but this fragrance is wow to me. I love it. It reminds me a lot of being at the beach. I just sort of picture a really beautiful sunset. It smells like the warmth of the sun setting as you're just kind of laying out, relaxing. It's a very relaxing fragrance kind of transports you to vacation and it's not overly luxurious or elegant. I think it's a really approachable fragrance. So kind of a nice gym perfume, running errands, every day, kind of maybe as soon as you get out of the shower, you kind of spritz yourself with a little Paris Riviera. Doesn't take itself too seriously. If I did not know this was a Chanel fragrance, I wouldn't necessarily picture it as a Chanel perfume. And not in a bad way. I don't think there's anything that's, you know, not luxurious about it. It's just kind of different. This is Coco Chanel on her day off. And I think it's good to have that variety in your fragrance wardrobe. You want a couple fragrances that are a bit more casual. Something to wear when you're not wearing your most expensive luxury fragrances. I think Paris Venice is still 
so delicious and still so pretty, but you could wear it any time. Very understated. I think it's even a little bit more casual than the Chance Eau Tendre. If you watch a lot of my fragrance videos, you know I usually save the best for last, and today's video is no different. I am so excited about this fragrance, but you can't be mad at me. I feel very lucky that I was able to get my hands on this. It is not currently available for sale on Chanel.com, and it's an exclusive. I don't know why, but there are a couple different Chanel fragrances that used to be widely available, and now they're exclusive. So you can only get them in the boutiques or Chanel.com. Allure Sensual is one of those fragrances, and right now it says the larger size is out of stock, but the smaller size it just says back ordered. So I picked this up at one of my local beauty boutiques. If you really want it, you could maybe call around. It is so special. This is a fragrance that is worth seeking out, and I remember smelling this for the first time at a fragrance training because we didn't have this at the counter years and years ago this was probably six years ago and i went around and i smelled all of the exclusives for the first time and i was so excited and i got to smell all of the other fragrances like this uh, 19 crystal some of the fragrances that you don't really see in the department stores as much anymore and at the end of the class when everything had dried down allure sensuelle was hands down my favorite well allure sensuelle and gardenia which we'll get to in a second. But since then, this fragrance has always been a standout to me and I don't know why it has taken me so long to add this to my collection. When I sprayed this on my arm in the boutique and I walked around for just a little bit and I let it dry, dry down, it was love. Could not believe I did not have this in my current collection and I was so lucky because they had two bottles left and then I purchased one. I imagine there are bottles that you could find around the different boutiques, but if you are looking for something that's kind of soft, sensual, a really beautiful, romantic date night fragrance, if you love Coco Noir, Paris Venice, something with a dreamy, creamy vanilla dry down, you will love Allure Sensual, and the beauty is truly in the dry down. Keynotes include May Rose, Frankincense, Amber Patchouli, with heightened notes of bourbon vanilla and pink pepper. I sincerely hope Allure Sensual is not going anywhere. That would be devastating if they got rid of this fragrance. And I think the only reason it's not more popular is that it just doesn't get the distribution. Now, it could be that maybe they're having inventory or stock issues. It could be a supply chain issue. Who knows? I'm just holding my breath, waiting for this to return to the website, just so I can have peace of mind knowing that it's not going anywhere. Even though I have a new small bottle, I just don't want to be without this fragrance now. And I did wait. I've been using the blotter cards but I, because I'm going to use this as my fragrance of the day. So I'm just going to spray directly on my arm. Oh, it's so pretty. It truly is sensual. Sensual. It really is one of the most... I don't even want to say sexy and seductive because it's not really in your face. It's just it's just wow it's kind of smooth it sort of just draws you in a little bit closer and it's delicious and it's probably the closest thing to a, a gourmand fragrance that Chanel offers Chanel doesn't really have a lot of gourmand kind of edible notes in their perfumes but Allure Sensuelle is delicious. Imagine the original Allure with maybe a little bit of a caramel vanilla dry down. It's just maybe a little bit softer, kind of creamy. It's not baked goods and it's not overly sweet. It's so dreamy and romantic. Those are the best ways to describe this fragrance. Just wow. Date night in a bottle. This might be my favorite Chanel fragrance ever. And I know that is such a bold statement. And how could I say something like that when I'm just now adding it to my collection? But 
I just kind of forgot about it. It's been on the back burner. Like, yes, at some point, I'm going to buy that at some point. It is delicious. It's beautiful. It is ultra feminine, incredibly elegant and sophisticated as well. I would put this in the same category. It doesn't smell similar, but I would put this in the same category. I would wear it for the same occasion as Gentle Fluidity Gold from Maison Francis Kurgian. What else? Maybe Roja 51. Again, they don't smell the same, but I would wear them for the same occasion. It's not so spicy or so intense that I think it really competes with Coco Noir. I think they're just so different. This is kind of perfect night in. Oh, Trecher would be another one. Kind of that cozy, romantic, lure somebody in. Lure somebody a little bit closer to you. That type of fragrance. That is Allure Sensuelle. Just incredible. Delicious. Mouth-watering. And the very last fragrance I have to unbox here is the Doozy. So between this haul and my Blind Buy Perfume haul, I do not plan to shop for fragrances for a minute. February is going to be a really tough month. It always is because it's Valentine's Day, so I'll, there are so many new launches. But I'm thinking about, I'm kind of toying with the idea of doing a no-buy for the month of March. We'll see how it goes. I don't really want to set myself up for failure, but I certainly don't need to purchase any other fragrances at the moment. I feel really good about all of these because they're perfumes that I've wanted for a long time. This was the big purchase. This is the Gardenia Eau de Parfum. This is the Gardenia that I already had in my collection. This is the Parfum, so it is highly concentrated. And this bottle right here was my wedding day perfume. So this is very special to me, very sentimental. And as much as I love it and I would love to keep using it, because it's my wedding day fragrance, I just kind of want to keep it as it is. I don't really care if it goes to waste. I just want to keep it and look at it and just appreciate it as just a little token, a little memento from the day. And I do have beautiful pictures holding this fragrance. It, it's so meaningful, but I still love the fragrance. I want to be able to wear it, but also the parfum has the little dropper, the little blot cap. It doesn't have a spray, so it's very difficult to wear this on a regular basis anyhow. Now that I have the Gardenia Eau de Parfum, not the True Parfum, I have my one of my favorite floral fragrances to wear. So this is a fragrance that I plan to spray and wear regularly and just enjoy. Gardenia and Beige have always been my two favorite exclusive fragrances from Chanel and now I finally have them both in my collection. This is just one of the prettiest floral fragrances I've ever smelled. It is very clean and it's very simple. But it's just heaven. Oh, it's so nice. Again, I can't believe it took me so long. I know they're different concentrations, but this smells very close to the True Parfum. And it's kind of clean, a little bit green, slightly sweet, just like a fresh bouquet of gardenia, and that's it. There's really not a lot else that you can pick up. Probably a few other floral notes in there that my nose isn't sophisticated enough to detect, but it's just floral, like fresh flowers walking through a garden. But the, it, there's a creaminess to the gardenia that is just lovely. I think this is, I'm biased, but I do think this is a beautiful bridal fragrance. This is a great wedding day perfume, but also nice for a brunch. Um, a get-together, a daytime gala. It could be like an elevated daytime event. I personally don't think this is a very evening fragrance. Of course, it always depends on your personal preference. So I would keep this more daytime, but it, it smells very special. So I would say a special outing during the day. And it will never be outdone. It's so classic because it is so simple. There's not a lot going on. It's not overly complex. So when you smell it, it's just, wow. It's been around for a really long time. I imagine it smells fairly different now, but the version you can get now, I just, it feels so timeless whenever you smell it. 
I could see somebody really young wearing this, somebody who's older, more mature wearing this fragrance. I just think it's perfect for everybody. I've been on the hunt for hidden gems and luxury niche perfumes for such a long time that it really does feel nice and kind of refreshing to return to some of my old favorites. And now my Chanel fragrance collection has expanded from eight to 14 fragrances, but it feels whole. It feels complete. The only other two fragrances that I thought about adding to my collection were Gabrielle Essence, which I thought I preferred Essence to the original. I think I still do prefer the Essence, but I'm not sure it's a love have to have in my collection. And I do have Gabrielle represented already, so I figured I could skip for now, and I may just skip it altogether. And then Coco Mademoiselle. I thought about either Eau de Parfum or maybe the Intense version. I currently have the Evening version. The Low Privé will be fine for now. At least Coco Mademoiselle is represented in some capacity to my collection, but I would say that's probably the one only other fragrance that is missing. I don't feel the need to add any other Chanel fragrances to my collection. I think this is it. And that completes today's perfume haul. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. Now I'm curious, I have to know, what is your favorite Chanel fragrance? Drop me a comment. We'll keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.